Okay, let's bring in good friend of mine, good friend of the show, journalist and host of The Megyn Kelly Show. You can find it on SiriusXM, by the way, and always on YouTube and podcasts, one of the most popular podcasts on the planet. Megyn Kelly, really good to have you. So, Megyn, fortunate to have you with all the lawfare going on, Trump cases going on. You know, it's a daily grind just to keep up with where things are with Trump and, and, and the legal issues. You're a lawyer. You're, what, what do you see? What does Megyn Kelly see with this landscape? Well, Trump got some good news out of Florida, which looks like, out of the four criminal cases, the best one, legally speaking, against him, the strongest one, I should say. And he got some really good news this week, which the left is flipping out over. Uh, I, I'll try not to bore you with the intricate details, but the bottom line is Trump's been saying all along, I could do what I wanted with those documents because of the Presidential Records Act, which allows me to take whatever I want. And Jack Smith has been saying, you're insane. You've been charged with violating the Espionage Act. And you can't say your right to presidential documents trumps the Espionage Act. Well, this judge, Aileen Cannon, just said to the parties, I'm mulling over two potential jury instructions. And I'd like you to give me proposals. And this is sort of where I'm going with the rule of law. And in both of them, she said, the Presidential Records Act will apply here. And in the second one that she's clearly mulling, she says, and it would give Trump the right to take whatever he wanted out of the White House without even saying a word to anybody about declassifying anything or personal or professional. And so if she goes with that, pretty much all legal experts agree, the entire case goes away except for one piece of it relating to obstruction. So this judge clearly, I realize the left thinks she's in the tank for Trump because he appointed her, but she's ruled against him too. And if she actually issues these jury instructions, he's all but home free. MK, isn't, so a lot of people watch these and they get confused and he's being prosecuted and persecuted in, in Georgia and New York on two federal, uh, separate federal cases. We get the sense, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm going to ask you your, your, your legal brilliant in your mind, doesn't fair play, doesn't fair play and common sense come into play in any of these? Because I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, that there have been instances of, of the same things that they're prosecuting Trump for. In many different instances, people aren't being prosecuted. So precedents, any of that precedents? Yeah. I mean, including the sitting president of the United States, who had classified documents in his possession. And there was a witness, his the author of his book, The Ghost Writer, to whom he showed classified material. He spoke it out loud, at least. He, he orally read it to the guy. And no charges. No, it's fine. If you're Joe Biden, it's fine because you're, quote, a well-meaning elderly man. But if you're Donald Trump, it's a different story. When even he's not accused of actually showing that classified document around at that meeting about Mark Meadows' book. He's only accused of saying, I've got it here, but I can't show it to you. The other guy actually read aloud from it all the contents to a person without security clearances, and it's, well-meaning, he's not going to get charged. So, yes, there's there's definitely what, what, a double what standard. This other, Meg, what this other idea, and I know, I know the, um, the appellate court reduced the bond that Trump was required from 454 million to 175, but still, it you know it, it it begs the question. So, if you're an average person who goes against the seated prosecutor, Letitia James in New York, um, in this case, and she doesn't like you, doesn't like your politics, can't they just bankrupt you if they want to by making yeah. these ridiculous bonds, even just to appeal something you don't agree with? 100. percent That the the penalty was built in to ruin Trump, whether he wins this appeal or not. Uh, it, it thus deprives him of his right to appeal. If you lose everything in order to file the appeal, what right to appeal do you have? This is one of the arguments he raised. And thankfully, the Court of Appeals, not the New York State Court of Appeals, that's the highest court, but the middle uh, appellate court agreed with him. Now, great. I mean, $175 million is still a lot of dough. But look, he found somebody to support it and he posted it. So thank God, because he shouldn't lose that case before he's already filed the appeal. But look, let me just zoom out and say the double standard is, is apparent in virtually every single one of these cases, both in who they charge and who they don't. But every day we get another example of it, okay? What happened today uh, or just this week in the New York State Stormy Daniels hush money case? You saw the judge there, Merchant, he gagged Trump. He said, you can't talk about my kid, my yeah. adult daughter who's a Democratic activist. Okay, then that led to a federal district judge named Reggie Walton 
You may or may not know this guy. He was the judge on uh, who handled the Scooter Liberty trial back in 2005. He went on CNN. Eric, this doesn't happen. It's very disconcerting uh, to have someone uh, uh, making uh, comments about a judge, and it's particularly problematic when uh, those comments uh, are in the form of a threat, especially if they're directed at one's family. Where was Judge Walton when Chuck Schumer stood outside of the U.S. Supreme Court and threatened the justices inside that they would reap the whirlwind, that they would have to pay for decisions that he didn't like? Did he say anything? Where was he when the protesters were outside of Justice Kavanaugh, when Justice Kavanaugh was almost assassinated, and all the other justices in the wake of the Dobbs decision having been leaked, did he feel the need to say anything in their defense? Not a word. And I went back to look. Did Trump actually threaten this judge or his daughter? I looked at every single post he made, not once. He criticized the judge and the daughter for being partisans, for being on a Trump witch hunt. That's all fair game. There's nothing even close to a threat. And so you know what's happening to judge well, uh, to this judge as a result? Um, judge Reggie Walton, Mike Davis of the Article 3 Projects has just filed a complaint about him because he's violated his ethical standards. So it's one standard for Trump and something else for everyone else. It's crazy. And then again, you point out that he... You know, Trump will say, I, I disagree with his judgment. Letitia James goes crazy. He's trying to, you know, uh, he, 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 we should bring him up on charges for that. Or the E. Jean Carroll says she's a nut job for thinking she's going to keep $83 million then, or $5 million, and then it became $83 million. They take what he says and they, they blow it up, bloodbath. Um, the other day, animals. He said he called the, the people, the illegals that came across the border, killing, you know, Lake and Riley and, and others, several other Americans, he called those people animals and somehow the left says, oh, he's saying all illegal, all, Ill all immigrants, they call them migrants, well, are animals. They, how they, about the one where he said, uh, he said the migrants are poisoning the blood, so they're poisoning the blood of Americans. They are. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean, I don't have to tell you about fentanyl yeah. and what's happening in our, no, uh, with our youth, no, you the don't. number one cause of death. They are. They're poisoning uh, pills that kids are taking. That's what he's referring to. The left won't talk about that. They won't talk about the open border. They just want you to focus on Trump's, quote, vile language, whether they're using it in context or not. The good thing is, Eric, I just have a hard time believing people really are fooled by it. I do think he needs to worry a little bit about suburban moms. And so he does need to fight back and clarify these things because it'd be very helpful to Trump if he could get those suburban women, if he could get any piece of those suburban women who used to vote Republican back on his side, it's ball game because he's already eaten into the Dem coalition by so much. I, I, I'm, jo I'm jumping because I'm, I'm, you you're so right. And you would be able to explain so many of these things um, in a way maybe he's not willing to or capable. I mean, here's my question. I know you've interviewed him before quite a bit. Have you had him on recently? Would you like to have him on again? Because I would love to see you and Trump talk about these things. It'd be phenomenal to watch. So I had him on in September, and I don't know that he loved that interview. He's okay <laughs> with it because, um, you know, there was a contentious part about the criminal cases, and there were lovely parts too. You know, but Trump, he kind of wants it all to be all to be lovely. He doesn't want any contention, um, even though that that works. You know, as a in terms of getting eyeballs to the interview, which is what he really likes. And since then, he I don't know, he's kind of gone on the attack against me a couple times publicly. He's still really mad about that debate question. So. Not sure he's going to come still, on anytime soon. Still, I still, think so. I think still. so. He brings it up a lot. He does. Yeah, he does have a, a long memory when it comes to those things. But you know, listen, I have a little bit of influence there. Maybe we make some calls even because I want to watch Good. it. I'd love I to want, talk to. I him. would love to watch Megyn Kelly with your history at the Supreme Court as a, as a lawyer and just being you know so involved in in the politics day to day of this. I would love to see that conversation now with four. Open cases still still happening. Just talk law, man. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be a great hour. Megan, really good I, having I you. I would love to do it. Really good having Thanks you again. Thanks for having you can me. Find, see you soon. You, see you soon is right. Uh, you can find Megan's show, the Kelly, Megan Kelly show on Sirius XM, YouTube always, and of course, anywhere you get your podcast. Megan, thank you so much. Coming up, the R.